Hey, what's up? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about how to use ZSpace to keep the number of layers down in your character animations. Alright guys, this is a quick and simple tutorial, but it's one that will help out with doing character animation. This one seems kind of obvious to me, but other people haven't done this, and I actually didn't do this until recently either. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Alright, when this guy walks through, we have his arm, it's behind his body, and then it crosses over in front of him. A lot of times I'll see where people will just take this, like this arm, and they'll go back to before it comes over, right over here, and they'll chop it, and they'll put this like on top, so that it crosses over the body. But you don't have to do that. Unless it's really going to mess you up in some fashion, just take all your layers and make them 3D. Then you can use Z space to make sure that this arm pops over other things. So if we open up the position property on here, notice I don't have any keyframes for that. And that's because I actually tied that to a slider. I'm using a simple expression on that. Let's bring up expressionist. You notice I have two in there. That's because this is the beta version that actually works in this version of AE. And I'm going to bring this into it. So you can see our expression right here. All we do is we take the slider up here. We multiply it by 0 0.01. So you can make this like one, two, and three, but it only has minor changes in here, just enough to stack them on top of each other. And then we just take the value that we currently have, and then we add a 0, 0,0, comma, 0, comma, Z. So right now the stack is set to one. So we're going to push this back into Z space, and it's actually going to be set to 0 0.01. When we come back over here, we're set to negative one, so that brings that to negative 0 0.01. So it's just enough to cross the body. If you want this to be more complex, you can change all the stack numbers for all of these things. And if you had to do something like where you needed to keep the shoulder behind and you wanted this arm to be here, you'd have to split this up into two different things. But they could still logically be in an order according to the body. If you had a character that went from like left to right, you can also do this with like a global variable so that everything goes behind on the one side and then everything pops forward on the other side whenever you turn the character around. If you only need to do this a little bit and you didn't need like X and Y tied together, you could just right click and separate the dimensions. I like doing it in the slider though because if you click on any of these things, you can get right to the slider value. That's pretty much it. I feel like that's simple, but it's something I don't see people do for some reason. And for simple characters, it really doesn't incur that much extra rendering for the 3D-ness of it. That would have been the only thing I was worried about. So hopefully this is one of those things where you're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? If not, congratulations to your organizational prowess. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. I've got a couple of things I want to add to that. I've just been really busy with Yellow Dog Party client work. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.